what's going on guys welcome back to RC every day so it's finally happening um was working with my friend uh jeremy kilborn at ease rc he uh was looking to do a winnebago and I remember on the channel i did one a while back real quick and easy conversion using leaf springs to me a semi axles things like that and uh it's been a thing of legend for a long time uh very easy way to do it but he we were talking and he wanted to see if the shop truck chassis would work and we took some measurements and did some uh, eyeballing and it looks like it'll work perfectly. So uh, with that being said, just like the other conversion, we're still gonna have to cut some of the floor out to get it to set low, which is obviously the point of using this chassis. I don't know yet what axles will work, what uh, front suspension arms will work. Uh, from the width of this thing, it's pretty close to, we are at seven and three quarters of an inch. So I'm guessing the standard Tamiya stuff will work. We'll find out. But anyways, don't pay ridiculous prices for these Winnebago's either. Uh, that's been a talking point in the uh, kit group for a little bit. Um, I picked this one up. It's it's got a few issues. The windows popping out. Uh, it's got some rust and some. It's got one little dent on the back, which I think happened in shipping because it was poorly packaged. But I'll, this only cost me a hundred bucks with tax and shipping on eBay, and uh, it's not not bad at all. The interior is mostly there. It's missing the cabinet doors and things like that. But we're gonna tear this thing completely apart and get the interior out so we just have the base metal thing to start working with and we'll walk through how to disassemble it how to cut it where to cut it um, i've already got it pretty well figured out in my head just from doing the other one in the past and uh yeah we'll start looking at ways to mount the chassis to the body and then we'll figure out all the suspension parts needed for the chassis to make it look right and fit on this um, I've already been asked a lot by multiple people, uh, will this, will you be able to fit dual tires under this? Um, I'm hoping so. The original one, I used a Tamiya semi-truck rear axle, and it runs the semi-truck tires and wheels, fits perfect, everything jives real nice. I was kind of thinking I wanted to do like a 2.2 on this, but we'll still check because I know a lot of you guys want to do dualies, so we'll still check and see what it takes to make that work for you. So we're going to get started tearing it apart. First thing you got to do, there's four bolts, two on this side, two on this side. Um, my six millimeter fits that. I'm going to remove those, um, kind of pry the body apart. This header piece comes out, and then we from there we can pull the top off, and then the entire interior kind of slides out through the front and uh, get this thing opened up a little bit. I did want to point out too and mention um, we're missing some of the marker lights. Um, all of these are pretty much the same on Tonka stuff from... I used to restore Tonka trucks. I have a whole other channel about that that I, I haven't used in years, haven't updated. Um, but I've collected and restored and sold uh, aftermarket parts for them and things. All of these headlights are basically the same from 58 to mid 70s. So you can find these, uh, maybe not exactly the same. Some of these are a little bit different, but you can find some that will snap in on eBay. There's people still selling replacement parts. I've still got a pretty good stash of them, so we'll see if we can find some marker lights and fix that later down the road. Uh, this also has tail lights, which this one has both of, luckily. Um, and we'll cover things too, like this dent back here. We can fix that pretty easily. It's just a, it's been pushed in on this side from shipping because they thought one layer of small bubble wrap would protect this giant beast in, the, in transit. But we'll finish pulling these screws out. These are all just self-tapping, nothing... Uh, Coarse thread, nothing fancy. Kind of pry the front apart. Up here we can see it. And boom. That piece comes out. Our windshield's ready to come out. This side piece is warped out of shape. Now we'll take our top off and set that aside. That's one thing to look for when you buy these. A lot of times they have broken corners. Uh, this one is in pretty good shape. While it's still discolored, it's good enough. Um, this is about the same shape as the one I built my other truck out of. So. I ain't got any real complaints about it. These are from the throw that on the floor from the seventies, so they're doing pretty good to even still be in existence. I saw that somewhere that Tonka made the most reliable trucks ever built. I definitely agree with that to a point. All right, I'm gonna pry this away. This thing is dirty. I got dust and stuff coming out of it everywhere. There we go. Now it's just a battle, forcing it out. Let's set the interior up. 
We've got a little bit of damage missing the wall here. <laughs> Dust bunnies in the bathrooms. And decent enough shape. It's good enough to use. Uh, this we can heat up and get back into place. And it's going to adhere it to the side of the camper once we get there. So our windows are real easy to remove. Um, these are warped up a little bit. Um, there are replacement windows on eBay as well. I just saw the other day when I was looking for this. This side's very stiff. That means we've got some damage somewhere. You don't have to remove the windows for this, but I'm just going to because they need to be cleaned up a little bit. There we go. That's how they should come out. You can see it's a little wavy. This one's seen some heat in its life. This side is not clean ball. Oh, I'm back there scratching up my shop truck. So we can clean those up. Yeah, that's warped. Look at it, it kind of bows down. <laughs> um, rear windows are usually what's missing on these because they slide. This one actually has both the little tabs on it that keep it from coming all the way out. All right, it just kind of pops out from the back. I just slid it over and popped it that way and it popped right out. That's a, that's a little more flexible piece. So this is what we're left with, rusty mess. And uh, the next step is gonna be to drill out these, uh, hard to see. I've got some rivets, I've got three rivets here. The three rivets up here, those are not easy to get to. We got six on the back as well. And what that does is that's holding this together. It's holding this triangle in to hold your tires. So once we get that off of there, we basically have a blank slate to fit the RC Everyday chassis up into it. So I gotta figure out, I don't remember how I did the front ones. Um, you, if you had a punch, we could probably drill them out from this side. We could punch and center punch it and drill through. I don't know that I have good enough drill bits to drill that side. So we'll go ahead and pull the backs off. And uh, yeah, we just want to find a drill bit as close enough to the size of the rivet. Um, they actually make tools and stuff for these Tonka trucks to restore. Um, I, that all got incorporated into my regular tooling and burn up over the years. So anyways, I got to find some drill bits. <laughs>
All right, guys. So it's been a full day's worth of work. Um, it's going to take multiple videos to get this done. I've got to order some parts. Um, yeah, wasn't really prepared to do this. I've got some parts. I've got a BRX 70 boom racing axle in here. Um, it does clear with some 1.9s. Very tight. Uh, slightly narrower hexes, but it does work. Um, these are just Traxxas rally wheels on Traxxas 1.9 tires. Um, it looks like up front is going to require the uh, Tamiya M06 or M series arms. That looks like it should have plenty of room. I'm not going to swap all this over because, like I said, I've got another project um, that will be here tomorrow, actually. And uh, yeah, that axle in this is for that. That chassis probably even too. So most of you guys on Facebook and stuff have been asking, what is it going to take to run dualies? And if you remember my other build, it has a Tamiya semi-truck axle. So I've got another one of those on the way for this. And we're going to put duals on this truck. Um, see what else there is. If I remember right, there was some issues with uh, aftermarket dually wheels. I was running the stock Tamiya semi wheels and tires, the one sevens on that. I'm looking at it right here. Um, <clears throat> and that was for a reason. Um, the offset was a little bit wider on the metal beadlock dual wheels, like the white uh, two hole st steel wheels. And I don't believe they'll fit. Now there is still room to cut. So we've got the side pieces here and those still have a quarter inch lip so you could if you really wanted to come back and grind this out um, it's going to start getting close to that body line so you have to be real careful um, i did my best to cut that nice i drilled holes in the corners first so we get at least a nice rounded edge i took more than i needed um, it doesn't matter the interior on this thing has bench seats over both of where the rear tires go so if you want to do something crazy and get it real low, you've got an inch and a half of room to tub it in the back. The front, um, I've got a plan for. Now, if you remember the original Winnebago build, I basically just cut the floorboard. It steps up to the driver's area. I cut it off at the step and added like, I think half an inch to it. So we raised the floorboard up and gave us plenty of clearance inside of here for our tires and everything. So again, that one was a narrowed semi-truck axle and servo on axle things like that this is going to be full independent suspension um, mo6 stuff looks like it'll work uh, micro 99 servo or 179 smart um, it still should be plenty to turn this that, that's that's not an issue <laughs> this thing is again you're not rock crawling with it so it's you don't need one of those high torque big dog servos so i think this is going to work out nice the way this fits wheelbase wise with the chassis is you just couldn't ask for it any better. So all I did to mount it, the rear cross members here, I drilled two holes in the back and straight through. Um, there's a little bit of a gap between the cross member and the bottom of the Winnebago. You could throw a spacer in there if you really wanted to. This stuff is uh, nylon 12 printed. It is not going to go anywhere. It flexed a little bit, especially this one with just one in the middle. You could put two there. Um, you could even go as far as to take like some servo mounts if you really wanted and bolt them to the chassis and then bolt it to the floor, make like actual body mounts if you wanted to. Um, I'm sure we could find a place to line it up and make it work. Uh, really don't need anything in the middle and the two on the front go through the existing holes on the servo mount that were there to mount rat rod grills and things like that originally. Um, I had to get some pretty long screws. Those are probably oh, 25 millimeter long M3 bolts. I put 15 millimeters of spacer. I didn't have a 15 mil spacer, so I had to use a 9 and a 5. So that's 14 millimeters. Sorry. I, was, I started out with 15. I had a 9 and a 6, and uh, it was just a little bit much. I'm gauging it off of this. Our chassis, the bottom of it right here is just just a little below that so your transmission the r4 has that one little screw doodad sticking up and that will be pretty much flush with the bottom of the body so then it's going to be up to you uh front shocks probably need something a little heavier on this than those internal spring shocks uh, maybe just a regular touring car shock that will work just fine they always clear the the things i've seen some guys using them on the shop trucks so one thing left to cut and i and I'm going to have a hard time doing it because I'm still, I don't have any transmissions right now. And the RC4 drive has been out of stock for a little bit. Um, I know they've got some more on the way. I don't know how far out that is at this 
point in time, hopefully not too much longer, the transmission is going to hit the floor right here, just, just in the middle. So we can do a couple of things. We can actually notch around it, or we can just split this and kind of bend it up around it. Um, I moved, left the motor where it was on this chassis. This is the same mounting holes as the Scottsdale video calls for. I moved the front suspension mounts all the way forward, and I moved the servo mount all the way forward, which there's still a little bit of adjustability in that. Using the servo mount for our uh, body mount, we can't really move it now, so um, we could always come back and do something else in the front too, like servo mounts, and bolt that to the uh, chassis or the body in the same way. But that's one thing left to do. If you've ever seen these things, they have like, like a, any kind of van, they have a doghouse. They have a mound in the front. So like in your Chevy and, and Dodge and Ford regular vans, it's kind of under the dash, the engine comes into the compartment. And then you look at like the Econoline vans from the 60s, they had a doghouse, basically an armrest, and that's where your engine was. So that's what I'm thinking about doing. I'm gonna make a little box that fits over this stuff. So it opens up, it'll look like an armrest in the interior and you'll be able to see the engine from inside of it. And that's, it, it, don't, it don't get much more scale than that. Um, you can make it as ugly or as cool as you want. You know, most of those motorhome engines were just hideous, covered in, especially this era, covered in smog junk and vacuum hoses and all kinds of stuff that was stupid. <laughs> so that's what I'm thinking with that. Um, I'm, everybody wants a template to cut this. It's really, the only guidelines I did for cutting this, I went to this part of the wheel well, the, the bottom edge on the front, and just cut straight across. So I measured that down, marked it. I mean, we're looking, where's my tape measure? We cut about four and a half inches all the way across the front. I did the same thing in the back, but I had put the chassis in and, and centered it, measured it from side to side and just cut that out. So the chassis is still protected. Again, if you go real, real low, you're gonna need to cut the middle out as well, which there's nothing wrong with that. That's what I did on the other one. I cut the same as the front, four and a half inches all the way across, and everything is covered by the interior of the Winnebago. So it works out nice. Your chassis could be mounted back here to the body, could be mounted up here to the body. This is old, this is 50 year old steel. This stuff, that one was hard to cut. You, know, you saw the sparks flying. This is not your, RC grade metal. This is Tonka steel. This was back when things were, things were really built and that's why these are still here with us. So take that into consideration when you're cutting because it may be a little more difficult than you, than you're thinking. But, uh, two, like it's strong enough is what I'm saying. This, most of this is riveted. So, and it's actually got a glue adhesive in it. Um, I've tried to take one apart before. Did not end well. So it ain't going anywhere is what I'm saying. So you got plenty of rigidity in this box. The floorboard, I don't know what gauge this is, but it's made in the USA Tonka Pittsburgh steel and it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna give out on you. So you, it's not gonna matter how much of it you cut out and your interior floor is perfect. You've got the boxes, they basically come up to here. So you've got tons of room to tub the rear, the front, we've got room to actually move the whole interior up. And here in the middle, like I said, we make our little cut or modification for the transmission, the top of the bell housing. Um, we've got room for everything. Let me grab some stuff. I mean, you got room for two giant two cell batteries. You could get a nice three cell underneath here. You can put your electronics just straight onto this metal. You've got, what do you got? Inch and three quarters of depth. And you've got eight inches of it that's usable on both sides. So plenty of room for electronics and battery. Um, on my other Tonka Winnebago, if you haven't seen that and you're, you're seriously thinking about doing this, go check out that old build. I used RC four-wheel drive, um, uh, like Galan 2, like a battery tray. I just bolted it to here with the straps, put a little, some spacers under it, and I could strap a regular battery in just like RC four-wheel drive. I used two of their uh, plastic fuel cells that came off their TF2s and the Galan 2s, and that one holds the ESC, one holds the receiver. I mean, it's just, it's that simple little wire management. Um, the only thing I can recommend is just keep measuring, measure everything. This is right at about two and a half inches from the inside of my shock mount to the inner part of the wheel arch. Um, just a, I mean, we're talking a millimeter off to the side because drilling the holes the way I did, 
just got off a little bit. The rear is perfectly centered. I checked it a thousand times. Uh, again, about two and a half inches from rail to inside lip. And yeah, it's just a uh, measure, 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 and hopefully only cut once. So what else, what else? Servo will be easy to mount from the bottom. That's why I flipped the mount around uh, at the beginning. And that's our body mounts. So our little micro servo, we can actually just screw that in nice and easy. We've got plenty of room. We've got another oh, three quarters of an inch between this part of the chassis and where it's going to drag the ground when you slam it. And uh, yeah, so you've got room for your servo linkage on the bottom of the chassis. You can go above the chassis. You're going to have room, all kinds of room for activities. So I think that about wraps it up for the underside. I want to flip it over put some tires in the front. Like I said, I don't have any control arms. I've got some 3D printed ones, but I don't have any of the stuff for it. Um, any of the rods and the, the mounts and things like that. So that'll be in the next video. So let's flip it over and just stick some tires and wheels on it and take a peek at it and see what it looks like. All right. So of course it's, it's really low, but uh, you get the gist of it. It actually looks pretty good on one nines. I bet some two twos would really, really look sharp. Um, I have a set floating around somewhere. But I don't want to mess with that yet. Not get ahead of ourselves. Um, this thing cleaned up really good. I don't remember if I've talked after the other part in the video. Um, on these Tonka trucks, like I said, I used to restore these um, all through the early 2000s. I was selling reproduction parts and doing custom restorations and all kinds of stuff with them. And uh, the best way to clean these, like this, just straight out of somebody's attic, it's covered in junk, put it in the shower. I stripped all everything off i'll do each piece individually as we put it back together the interior the roof and all that uh, but just put it in the shower and soak it with scrubbing bubbles just layer after layer of scrubbing bubbles like shower bathroom cleaner um, that stuff actually works on this it gets a lot of the stuff out we're down to just the the pitting and the rust now but the brought the color out this one's actually a little bit better shape than the original one i have other than a couple big spots of surface rust but um, the scrubbing bubbles, let it soak for a little bit as it starts running off and just hose it down with some warm water and, uh, yeah, it gets them really, really clean. So, um, like I said, on the suspension, we're going to have to put like some touring car shocks on this just for the weight. Um, in the rear, we're going to have to add a leaf spring or two. Um, we already have three leaf on there. That's the base leaf pack, the hobby park leaf springs that I've got in Amazon store. They're super cheap, comes with the shackles, the hangers, and all of that jazz. So I've got tons of spare leaf springs. Some of you guys, if you've ever owned a TF2, you've got a bag of extra leaf springs now, especially with these new ones. So throw another middle size leaf in it, see where we get. But once we get the front suspension done, then we'll start dialing in the ride height. Um, I kind of don't want to do a dually now. I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to try out some tires and wheels once we get it rolling. But I do have that to me a semi axle. Okay, thing. so those the stock axles are not the most scale looking. They're kind of square, but you can mount the leaf up on top of or under, and they're the same width as mounting points as pretty much everything leaf spring RC related. Just ordered the axle today. It'll probably be a week or so before it gets here. Um, I've got to figure out control arm width and which ones to get, and find some pins and things like that for it. Um, there's lots of resources for all these things with the shop trucks in the kit group on Facebook. Um, there's a link on the website, on the store page in the, in the shop truck and the rat rod listings to the group kit if you need help with anything. Um, looking at the inside, I'm not sure if you can see our shock tower is right here and our seat, it should be pretty good. So we should be able to set the interior straight on the shock towers. We've got plenty of clearance over the transmission. Um, we may not even have to put a doghouse in it and have it where you could see the engine. So. I don't know. My plan for this right now was just to get one, put the chassis on it, do this video series showing step-by-step step what it takes to use my chassis on the Tonka Winnebago. And uh, yeah, just have one I can take to events and show people, hey, look, there's other purposes this thing can do. Um, here's how I did it, so on and so forth. It was just kind of be a tester. So I'm not in any rush to finish this and get it complete or repaint it or go with any theme. I just want to get the chassis on first. And then we can come back to it later in time and, and detail it out and finish it when time allows. So got a lot of projects on the plate. So these things are always rusty like that. They don't, Tonka never painted between panels and things like that. Um, you see we got plenty of room. 
inside of here. There's plenty of room under the interior for our screws, these button head M3 that bolt to the chassis. Um, up front, I did have to run it the other way because I couldn't get a tool in here to tighten down. Yeah. But you can see the spacer situation on the front. There's 14 millimeters of space, and that'll all hide nicely underneath the floorboard. So that wraps it up. If you're building along with this, go check out part two. Um, should it be out by now? And we'll have further progress. Um, check out rceveryday.com if you need any kits, chassis kits, if you want to do this build for yourself. And uh, keep it scale. Appreciate you guys watching. See y'all in the next one.